Hi, so today we are taking a look at pathogens and immunity. So what is a pathogen? Well, a pathogen is an organism that causes disease. Actually, this isn't working for me. Let's change it up. Much better. So what is a pathogen? Well, a pathogen can be a virus, bacteria, it can be a protoctist or it can be fungi. Diseases are caused by these pathogens and they can be transmitted from one person to another. Disease is caused by pathogens and they can be transmitted from one person to another. And once inside the body, the pathogens can enter the cells and they can actually damage the cells. They also secrete toxins which are poisonous to us. So how do pathogens enter our body? Well, they can do that by either direct contact or indirect contact. These are routes of transmission. Transmissible disease is a disease in which the pathogen, the causative factor, can be transferred from one person to another. Here we have a host. He is the carrier of a pathogen. On this side, we've got a normal, healthy person. The host, through direct physical contact, such as touching or kissing, transmits the pathogen to our normal person and he also becomes ill. This is an example of direct contact. It involves physical contact. Here we have an example of indirect uh, transmission. It does not involve physical contact. So we've got our host, which is the carrier of a pathogen. Here we have a mosquito. The mosquito acts as a vector. The, how this works is the mosquito bites and gets infected with the same pathogen as this animal over here then the mosquito goes and it bites the healthy animal this way the mosquito infects our second healthy animal so let's take a look at our body's natural defenses these are uh, put in place to protect our body from invading pathogens so we have mechanical barriers and physical barriers mechanical barriers include our skin for example our skin forms an impenetrable layer and this protects us against pathogens that are trying to invade when the skin gets cut a blood clot forms and this is another barrier mechanism put in place to prevent the entry of organisms and then we have our chemical barriers these include mucus for example mucus traps organisms and then as we swallow the mucus down into our stomach in the stomach there's hydrochloric acid which is a really strong acid and this kills the organism so how can we decrease the number of pathogens that are able to infect us well by food hygiene for example cleaning your food utensils and the things that you prepare food on decreases the amount of organisms that are able to reproduce and infect us. This is known as general hygiene. Another way that you can uh, prevent organisms from infecting us is not by allowing animals close to food because animals are often the carriers of certain pathogens which can then affect us. We can also decrease the temperature by putting food in a fridge and this will slow down the growth of bacteria as the temperature drops. My temperature is getting pretty hot out here. <laughs> then it's also important to separate raw foods from foods that are going to be cooked. For example, raw meat has bacteria in it. That's why we cook it to kill the organisms. So it's important to not cross contaminate and introduce these bacteria to fresh foods that aren't going to be cooked because then they will stay alive and the organisms will then infect us when we eat the food. Okay, so let's take a look at the immune system. This is a system that protects our bodies. It kills invading organisms. Well, it identifies them and then it kills them. So we have white blood cells in our bodies, right? Well, we've got a specific type of white blood cell called lymphocytes and they produce antibodies. Well, what is an antibody? Well, an antibody is a protein molecule that's secreted by different lymphocytes. And different lymphocytes will secrete a different type of antibody. Antibodies work by binding to a antigen with a complementary uh, shape. So antibodies are specific to uh, specific or different antigens. And an antigen is simply a molecule on the surface of a pathogen um, which has the capacity to bind to 
antibody, different antibodies. So once the antibody has bound to the antigen, um, it forms an antibody antigen complex and this way the antibody tags the pathogen to alert phagocytes to come destroy the pathogen or the antibody starts reactions in the blood which produce enzymes and destroy the pathogen. So this is an illustration of the immune response. A pathogen enters the body of a normal person, healthy person. Once inside the body, lymphocytes in our body encounters the pathogen and a specific lymphocyte will, which will produce, uh, identifies the pathogen and then this specific uh, lymphocyte starts dividing through mitosis. It produces more of itself and then these lymphocytes secrete antibodies which destroy the pathogen. Then memory cells are also formed. After the immune response, some of the um, lymphocytes stay in circulation as memory cells. When there's a second invasion of the same pathogen, the lymphocytes will be able to divide much more rapidly and destroy the pathogen before it gets the chance to make the host sick. This way the person becomes immune to that specific pathogen and that's why we don't get the same cold twice. So one way we can sort of train our immune system to identify organisms is by vaccination. Through vaccination you introduce a dead or inactive version of a specific organism then your body, the lymphocytes in your body will identify this organism and develop antibodies and memory cells resulting in long-term immunity. So there is what is known as active and passive immunity. Active immunity involves when, for example, you get sick and you develop your own antibodies against an organism. You also then have memory cells which will protect you against the same organism in the future. Another example of active immunity is vaccination. Then we have what's known as passive immunity and this is more of a short-term uh, immunity. This is for example when a baby gets breastfed and antibodies in the mother's breast milk passes through into the baby. This baby receives these antibodies and they are able to protect the baby against certain diseases. However, there are no memory cells involved because your body's own immune response wasn't activated. Thus, this is only a short-term uh, immunity. The definition of active immunity states that it's immunity produced by the body. Passive is a short-term immunity by antibodies acquired by another or from another organism. So how has vaccination helped in controlling major diseases? Well, smallpox, which is caused by a virus, was almost eradicated by the World Health Organization through the process of vaccination. So what they did is they went around uh, all the various countries that were affected by the disease and they actually vaccinated the children and there are still programs in place to help with the vaccination and thus keep this disease away. Polio is also controlled through vaccination. This is also a virus and it causes paralysis of part of the body. Measles, which is another virus, causes blindness and there's also a vaccine developed against measles. So you might have heard the term autoimmune disease as this is a disease or a group or type of disease that is starting to increase in numbers. So how it works is our immune system actually gets confused and starts attacking ourselves. So you know how your white blood cells which usually produce antibodies against a pathogen. Now what happens is the white blood cells start producing antigens that attack the body, not pathogens. And thus it gets into the state of confusion and your body literally starts attacking itself. For example, in the case of type 1 diabetes, which is a congenital disease, uh, which basically just means you are born with a disease, the pancreas 
gets attacked by the uh, by the body so the body actually attacks itself and by doing so the body destroys the beta cells in the pancreas which secrete insulin which regulate our blood glucose levels and thus we are not able to regulate our blood glucose levels and a person suffering from that is known as a diabetic has diabetes and will have to inject with insulin. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. It's a bit different today. Let's take a look at some past papers. Question two, a pathogen is a disease causing organism. Pathogens are transmitted from one host to another. So A asks us to describe and explain two ways in which a pathogen can be transmitted from one host to another. Well, there are a couple of ways that pathogens are transmitted. One of these would be direct contact. Um, it can be blood or saliva, sweat. Another way is through uh, airborne droplets. B outline two natural body defenses that prevent pathogens from entering the body well there's quite a few for example one would be the skin uh, it has a protein called keratin and that is very hard to penetrate um, tiny hairs for example the tiny hairs in our nostrils also trap pathogens and prevent them from entering then our mucus on our mucous membranes also trap pathogens and the mucus takes uh, the this helps to excrete the pathogens so that they don't enter 2b asks us to describe two hygienic food preparation practices that can stop the spread of diseases caused by pathogens well this would be um, for example general hygiene of the person preparing the food so washing your hands um, generally having a clean area and space where you prepare food. Another one would be to not allow animals close to the food as they are often carriers of diseases. Another one is to uh, decrease the temperature, so putting the food in a fridge for example to slow down the growth of organisms and then not to uh, let raw meat come into contact with fresh food that's not going to be cooked. Question 3 asks us to state one other method that has been developed by humans to prevent the spread of disease caused by pathogens. Well, there's a couple. One of these would include vaccination. Another would uh, include treating water supply, for example, to prevent pathogens uh, from uh, multiplying in our water. We also use antiseptics to clean items that uh, potentially become contaminated and could possibly spread a disease. Question 19. Which row describes the features of passive immunity? Now remember, passive immunity involves immunity in where the antibodies is not made by yourself. So antibodies are not made by ourselves. So we'll look at these two options as they have the option that antibodies are not produced by self. So does a passive immunity involve memory cells? Well no, because passive immunity involves antibodies received by an organ other organism. Um, and then at the effective period, um, passive immunity is always going to be short term since there are no memory cells. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. It was a little bit different, but study hard and go and get those good marks. Also, that's Table Mountain in the background. <laughs>